What the fuck is up? Higher point of view here. Your West Coast Packer backer. Here to talk about what else? Training camp still. But we getting closer. We getting close as hell. Preseason is already here for the other teams. But the uh, Packers will be playing tomorrow on Saturday. So uh, we looking forward to that. But uh, let's go over another position group, y'all. Um, a very underrated one, I would say. Tight ends. Um, we gonna start off from the top. We gonna start off from the top with this too. <coughs> we on some fire right now, gelato <coughs> from Hotbox. I don't know if that got shit to do with Tyson because Tyson got some show called Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson. The logo kind of looked the same, but I don't know. But it's fire anyway, gelato. All right, tight ends. We're going to start off with the vet, Mercedes Lewis, the best blocking tight end in the league, confirmed by coaches and film. All his coaches have said that. All the Packers coaches have said that. Uh, that's why he came back for his 100th year, you know? And he still can catch the ball in the end zone. And ain't nobody looking at him to catch the ball in the end zone. But I guarantee you, this year we'll get about two touchdowns from him. But he's basically there for the, you know, the camaraderie, the leadership, and the blocking. After Mercedes, we're going to go, uh, who's actually the number one tight end. But I had to get Mercedes out of the way due to his seniority and, uh, you know, long career. But uh, Big Bobby Tanyan, what I forgot on my family night review was to talk about him. He caught a few passes. One, he caught one in the flat, you know, like two yards away, and he took that shit like 30 yards. And then he caught another one over the middle. Now, him catching one over the middle is really important because we all know how QB1 likes, you know, he, he got to trust you if he going to throw over the middle. I mean, the last two years of McCarthy, that nigga never threw over the middle. So he didn't have any trust. But, uh... Seems like we got the trust now with Big Bobby in there. I mean, can 10 to 12 touchdowns earn trust? I always say 10 to 12 because I don't know exactly how many he caught last year. I forgot. It might be 10, 11, or 12. So that's why I say 10 to 12. But, uh, yeah, Bobby Tanyan, he's coming back to prove to you guys that that wasn't a fluke, you know? He's been working with George Kittle the past three, four years. His swag is changing up a little bit. You see he's rocking a nice little, you know, he's rocking a ponytail, the man bun, you know? That's been in for a few years now, and, you know, it ain't going away. I rock it from time to time. You guys have seen it. But uh, Big Bobby Tanyan, man, he's the number one tight end for a reason. You know, he's just been picking up his game every year. He's been improving, blocking, catching, route running. Now he's putting it all together, and um, we should see, a, you know, Pro Bowl. I don't know about all pro, but we should definitely see a Pro Bowl caliber type season and i say caliber because we're not sure Packers gonna have a lot of good players so they're not all gonna make it but uh yeah bobby tanya now next i'm gonna just get him out the way and i'm just gonna say he's not even gonna make the roster but you know i'm a little worried uh jay sternberger uh i don't know man just been a weird couple years for him you know he didn't uh he hasn't been progressing the way i think we thought he would you know we drafted him uh i don't remember but it was pretty high for a tight end and we drafted him to do some things you know he was supposed to come right after jimmy graham and and be a problem and tanyan ended up taking all his shine so sternberger i'm gonna say that uh you will be a practice squad guy and the reason i'm saying that you know you got skills and all that we drafted you for a reason but uh we got these two dogs coming back that y'all might not know too much about Josh DeGuerra or Josiah DeGuerra. I don't know what the fuck his name is, but DeGuerra, last name, uh, number 81. Last year, he played early in the year. It was a Detroit game. I think he got hurt, but right before, like that game, he was balling, you know, and the play he got, he actually got hurt on the completed pass. So that speaks volumes too. He could have just dropped the ball and not cared about it. It was actually an impressive catch on the sideline. Go check that out. But, uh, He's back in camp, and they say he looks awesome. They say he looks great. And, uh, you know, again, LaFleur had the motherfucker in the game and, you know, game plan certain stuff for him, you know, last year. 
So uh, you got to expect he's going to get in, you know, and, you know, make the roster. So that's why I'm saying Jace is out. But he's not the reason Jace is out. They might still keep Jace if they didn't have Daphne. Now, I don't know how many tight ends we're going to hold. But uh, Daphne, just like DeGuara, is, uh, you know, pretty impressive from what we've seen him. He's more, you know, he got the body, you know, like he just looks like a specimen, you know. Just a perfect, you know, perfect body for the position. Bulky kind of guy, but he has speed. He can catch. And, you know, I don't know how they're going to do this. I believe, I'm not positive, but I believe I've seen him line up at fullback a few times. So I don't know. You know, we don't carry a fullback anymore. We need, you know, we need to. But, uh, you know, it just seems like we've been putting a third or fourth tight end or, you know, Jamal even did it a few times just to fill the fullback void because we haven't had one for the past couple of years. We miss you, Danny Vitale. But, um, yeah, man, that's it for the uh, tight end, y'all. We done with that. So, uh, you know, Bobby Tunyon coming back to show y'all he wasn't playing around and then that that wasn't a fluke. Mercedes just coming back. Hopefully we can get not fuck fuck. Hopefully we're going to get big dog a ring so he can retire on top. That's why he's back. But again, he's still one of the best tight ends in the game blocking wise. So, uh, you know, he's still going to pay us dividends. And again, he's a very good mentor. So after that, Sternberg, I told you, all I just think he's going to be the odd man out. We got a lot of talent on the offensive side this year. I don't think we're going to be holding five or six tight ends. We probably going to hold about 10 receivers. You know, so I'm really interested to see how these roster cuts are going to go. So uh, that's what the fuck I think about the tight ends. And uh, yeah, with DeGuara and Daphne, we got two X factors. I call them X factors because there's not a lot of film on them. But uh, LaFleur sure knows what they're good at doing. So, uh, man, expect touchdowns from everybody, man. And uh, I don't think 12 is going to throw as many as touchdowns as he did last year. Well, actually, he is because we have an extra game. So, yeah, he might throw around the same amount, I would say. And it's going to be spread out, man. It's a lot of love that got to be spread out, man. You got MVS, Alan Lazard, Devontae Adams, fucking Bob Tanyan. Don't forget about the backfield. Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon coming out. They're going to catch a few touchdowns. Who the fuck else am I forgetting? Devin Funches. Like a lot of Amari Rogers, Randall Cobb. Goddamn. Like, how we gonna, you know, how we gonna do this? But you know, good problem to have. But uh, yeah, man, that's the motherfucking tight ends, and I'ma end with that. And I'ma end with this. Some fire. Gone.